I, full disclosure, I work for Microsoft. I'm not acting as an agent of Microsoft today. I'm here for JJC. And I love that you have Copilot. Copilot's the best. I love Copilot. My personal license, I don't have Copilot. But I want to show, um, if you're outside of JJC and you don't have access to Copilot, I wanna, do want to mention, um, I'm trying to use free tools that are accessible to everybody. The, the democratization of AI is super important to me. And when you start to use all of these tools on top of each other and to do different things, what's going to happen is it's going to get expensive really fast. You know, so particularly if you sign up for a free trial and you forget about that, and then all of these tools are billing you every month, and it's an easy rat hole to, to go down. So you have Copilot. Copilot can do it all. Love it. Use it. At home, you may not have it, or the, the enterprise version, I will say. One thing that's very important, I'm going to mention right up front, because I, I have it at the end, and I don't think we're going to have time to get to it, is data privacy and protection. When you're at home or not at JJC, where you have that enterprise license, it says right under the co-pilot chat that your, your data is protected due to like. Um, it, because of the company that you're working at or the organization. At home, it will not say that. So all of your inputs are going to be used to train the model. Keep that in mind. So one of the use cases I have, when we're not going to have time to get to it today. Um, I do mentoring, and I do mentoring for people with disabilities, people that are blind. So in helping uh, one of my mentees look for a job, we highlight the job description in LinkedIn, and then it can read it to him. And then we put it in, into ChatGPT or Copilot and ask them to create a cover letter based on the demands of that job and matching to his resume. It's a great use case for anybody. Um, he grabbed his address and phone number and put it in his resume to do the cover letter. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Um, unless you don't care if these models get access to your personal information. There's another um, thing I, I want to talk about as well. And it's every time you use a third party tool, you are agreeing to the license. And, and I'll show you some examples um, that they, you know, they're sharing information. Like every time you sign in anything with Google, right, you're allowing Google to pass on all of your information to these third parties. Okay, so just, just something to be aware of. Um, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but <clears throat> let's go down. Okay, how AI transforms education. I see, see this in three main ways. There's a personalized learning. It's all about, you know, tutors and, and you know, tailoring for a specific subject um, and meeting the students' needs. That could be IEP related, 504 related, anything. Boosting productivity, which is the main focus today and generating content, which is the main focus for today. Um, the previous presenters did a fantastic job about you know, building prompts and acting as a blank. What is your role? Acting as a as a so and so, create a something, and display it in this format. Okay. So, and then you want to add on. So it's very oversimplified. Some of you are maybe totally new to generative AI and the chatbots, and so this is a nice framework. It's very simple. And so again, you're going to see some prompts that I have that I'm going to copy and paste, and they're they're very large. The more information you can give the tool, whether it be Gemini or Copilot or ChatGPT, the more richer your output's going to be and the higher quality your output's going to be, and the more customized and tailored it's going to be as well. Um, and then here's, I have a lot of takeaways. I'm not going to spend time, but these are different scenarios. So are you using it for coding? There's a, you know, an area for that. If you're using it to, um, for prompt engineering or for designing Graphics, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Is it possible to switch to presentation mode so that slides would be bigger? Um, I, I, I don't want to because I'm going to be demoing and I'm going to be jumping constantly jumping in and out. Could you maybe then enlarge the PowerPoint? Oh, of course. To maximize the of course. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Sure. So, and I'm just going fast because it's, I have a lot of information to cover. I will leave, I will share this out with, with, um, JJC admins or whoever wants to contact me, um, I'll make the whole deck available and I have some takeaways. So you can see, you know, here's all the different, you know, potentials and possibilities of roles. You can set restrictions. So as an example, uh, 
create a table for me comparing Gemini and Copilot and only make it stop at 20 rows or whatever. You can always put those kind of parameters. Um, you know, act as a coder, create a module, show it as a JSON file, whatever you want to do. So it's really the combinations are really limitless. What this is just designed is to get your kind of to get that ideation going. Okay. So I'm going to jump in right now. I'm going to jump into some demos. And we, we can jump around depending on your interest and the time we have, but I want to start with the first couple. Um, and so here's an example. And, and this was brought up in the previous class. I, great segue. Um, AI policies. Uh, do we have an AI policy across JUCO? I don't know. We, we probably do, and it's probably iterating on. But for my class, I, I know I need to have one. Okay, so I put this prompt in, act like a college professor, and create an AI transparency policy for my class. Now, that's the basic prompt. That's the prompt that goes in the, in the first, you know, that first slide that I showed, just the bare bones information. And it can generate something. And it will probably generate a lot of generic stuff. Okay. What I wanted, and here's the better prompt, act like a college professor and create a, and I put this in quotation marks deliberately, responsible AI and transparency policy. The two go together in my mind. My classroom, for my classroom to set expectations of usage. So it's, it's allowed, I'm allowing it for my class, um, as long as it doesn't infringe on copyrights or trademarks. And citing is always used. That was mentioned previously before. Um, and it's always disclosed that that you use the support of AI. As an instructor, I will be incorporating the uses of AI tools for myself, and I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to be checking for um, plagiarism. It's going to help me with with grading and support, and um, make the language clear and concise. Da da da. Okay, I won't go through this, but here's what, and I used um, Bing. I used um, you know Copilot, right? It was called Bing Chat. I have to tell you, I've iterated on this deck 10 times, even in the last two months. So, and it, as you know, even when, when you use Gemini, it says Bard, it, it, it still, it hasn't cleaned up itself with all the name changes. But here's what it generated, short and sweet, because I said concise. I don't, I'm gonna add those to my syllabus, right? So it has the transparency, there's my class, artificial intelligence and ethics, Transparency disclosures and look at it as student and instructor. So it's not just the expectations that I'm putting on the student, but I'm holding myself accountable too. And I'm being transparent, and the students are going to know what to expect to me as far as my usage of AI for this classroom. Now, I had the mention of college wide policy. So I said, if there's an overlapping, you know, if the college or university has an AI policy in place, that trumps this. Okay. So there's no confusion and that's what it generated and I can email that to my students I can tack it on to my syllabus we're good to go as a human I do need to read it and make sure it's what I want we're never just going to send this blindly without reviewing it editing it making it my own uh, but you get the idea now what's the next step I was going to jump in and out but I think in the in the interest of time I, I won't we can always kind of do this together later now I want to craft an email to get the department head to approve the policy for my class, if that's necessary. So I gave Copilot again this prompt as an adjunct professor, and I'm telling Copilot, you are an adjunct professor. So this is all in the same conversation. Very important to know when you're using a tool like Gemini, like ChatGPT, or Copilot it's always going to use the information above it. So when you start over, you want to click the little broom icon and sweep it clean or start a new chat that's unrelated. Or it's going to, that's where it's going to get a little weird on you with the results because it thinks it's part of the previous thread. It's all connected. So right after that, I say, as the adjunct professor, you need approval of your department head to accept the IA policy above, okay? Write a professional email to your department head, Dr. Tangi Freer, requesting approval of the above policy before the start of the next semester and reference the attachment. And then here's the output. I know it's really hard to see, but it created a subject line for me. Nice. 
okay? Dear Dr. Ferrero, and da da da, and then enumerated, here's the highlights of the policy. I would have preferred rather attach, and we can iterate on this. Now, I think I even had, okay, I got a little cute uh, on my own, and uh, I said, uh, Dr. Ferrero has a big ego, and you, flattery, like you need to be, make this more flowery and flattery. So you can just play with that. I mean, just as a, just trying to get cute, and I won't go through all that. But again, tone is important. So if, if it's not your voice, you know, you can say, make it more professional. Um, oh, add, and you know, it gets to a point where you just want to modify the email yourself. You need to tell ChatGPT, oh, I need a, I need an answer by whatever. You no, know, you can just put that in the, in the email or set a reminder. So, you know, diminishing returns there. Now the next one, this is a very large prompt and I'm gonna actually use this. So I'm gonna create a lesson plan. Now, there are a lot of tools and JJC might have a license for a tool, right? Not knowing that and then not knowing the cost. We're just gonna use, uh, I believe, I, I use Gemini for this example. This is a very long prompt. Again, the more information you give it, the better. I got this prompt from OpenAI has an educator blog and an educator um, community, an area of their website. We'll look at that later. It's fantastic. Uh, you can be, become overwhelmed with the sheer volume of information. OpenAI has all prompt scripts. Great, great resource. So here's what I'm going to do. If y'all don't mind, put up with me for a minute. Follow along. Um, Let's see, and I'm gonna take this. <laughs> okay, here's that prompt. I just wanna show you, and some of these take longer to build and some are pretty quick. And let me go, I'm gonna do this in, I did the first one in Gemini, I'm doing this one in Copilot. I should, don't do that to me. All right. And there, let's see what it does. It's gonna take a minute. Now, look what it did. It, Gemini did not do this, but Copilot did. It, it stopped to ask me, could you please tell me what subject matter do you? Okay, so it's, it's gonna be iterative and this could take a long time. So I'm just gonna pick in the interest of time, I'm just going to pick this one. You could type in whatever you want. You could type in I'm teaching, you know, 200 level um, college folks on C++ or ethics and AI, whatever. And it'll keep prompting me with these questions and I'll keep answering. So mm, they've, they've read some plays before. Now, what do you like? Okay, so learning goal. I want to analyze structure of a sonnet. And it's going to prompt you, just take, walk you through right, building your lesson plan, and here we go. And, and it'll keep going like this. I, I won't keep up, but you kind of get the idea, right? Let me go back to my deck. Um, okay, now, this uh, chat PDF will take a long research paper, medical journal, re whatever, and it will synthesize it for you. So uh, let, let's take a look at that. And I have this one on thermodynamics. It's a thermodynamics research paper. And here we go. And it gives questions you can ask. So um, let's take this last one. But you can ask your own questions. Um, you know, it's gonna ask questions and you can continue on with this. Um, I did in the back, I have a whole list of resources that link to some of these, um, where the research papers are, some of the plagiarism checkers, things like that. So again, you can go on, on and on with that. Now, Let's, we can create a quiz. I'm not gonna use, well, I can use quiz gecko, I guess. I have to wait for me. Okay, I'm signed in. Let's see, create. I've only used it a couple times and I wanna create a, 
quiz. So mm -mm -mm, from a URL. Oh no, from an upload. You can, so you can, here's what you can do. You can type in your own text. I want to create a quiz for my Spanish class and you can specify the types of questions, things like that, or you can pick a topic. You can go to a website. So you can take, you know, any website on a certain topic and say, create a quiz from that. Um, or we can upload. So I'm going to upload that same file, that thermodynamics paper. And then multiple choice, that's fine. We're not going to go too far with it. Then I'm going to show you another way you can create, generate free quizzes. It's along the lines of the, the trivia that was mentioned. And while this is generating, I'm going to say, um, my in-laws, they do a, a trivia night. They plan this for a year. They spend $1,000 on quiz question packages. And now they can generate those for their trivia night for charity. They can do it free in, in like 10 minutes. Um, what's bigger? Okay. Uh, energy efficiency. Sorry, I didn't, wasn't paying attention. I was talking. So can they all see this on, in Teams? They're, they're all able to. All right. With video, with music, with photos, graphics, things take longer to generate. Okay, so here's our quiz. Um, what types of conditions are fully transient conditions? Machines are, okay. So you can see it took that paper and it created quiz. So if you have required reading for your students, um, this probably work better in like literature. You can ingest, you know, um, a whole thing or reference, reference a novel, you know, um, and it can generate quiz. Yes. Does it come with the answer? Sorry? Does it, does it come with a quiz answer? Quick answers. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, it should have the quiz answers. And I know that uh, the GPT that I use, QuizMaker, which I'm going to show as well. Um, Shares link. I don't know. There's hmm. a question from the chat. Yes. Is there, uh, uh, along the line, it does say, can you generate quizzes for videos? Yes, I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you. Yes, you can. Um, okay, let's jump. Let me see where I'm at. So this is an example. I'm not an expert on any one of these third-party tools for the reasons that I said. As I'm not in, I'm not in, in academia, so I've, I'm limited use of QuizGecko. But that's okay because we can use a GPT for this, and I, that might be my next example. Aha. Okay, we're gonna. Um, some of the few further examples I have are using GPT. So if that's the GPT store as part of ChatGPT and OpenAI. It's just called GPT store. They're all free. Don't worry. Um, I think. But here's another way to skin a cat. So um, we're going to use this. I won't go to my Word document. And when you go to OpenAI or ChatGPT, you will see... Uh, a page to log in. I should be already logged in. And here, we once you're logged in to ChatGPT, you'll you should see Explore GPTs right here where I'm highlighting. So I already had this bookmarked, but we can get to it. I'm just going to show you what this looks like, and we'll play around with this in a little in a little while. Follow along if you can. It's chat.openai.com/backslash/gpts right up here. Okay. And there's a whole host of things, and you can search by category. There's there's Dolly, that's graphics. So Dolly Midjourney, Leonardo AI, that's all um, generating graphics. There's writing, productivity, research and analysis. There's programming. So there's a whole category on programming, and you can take a look at all of that. So I want to make a quiz. I'm going to go back to the quiz maker. I found quiz maker. You can just do a search, and I'm going to put in my prompt do that and I, I set it I set the threshold to five just in the interest of time because it does take some time to generate and I said um, as an adjunct professor generate a quiz of five multiple choice questions on the topic of organic chemistry the students are 200 level college students and so it's creating multiple choice now you could put in a hundred you could put in a hundred and you could like make those cards in, um, you know, one of the quiz apps, right? And to help your students study for a test, whatever. whatever. Um, 
And you know, and if and if it's gonna generate some things that you want to get specific. So if it's a unit on organic chemistry, you want to be very specific because it could be all over the place. And you're like, well, these questions aren't really relevant to this to, to my lesson for this month or this week. Okay. So very nice. We're gonna do more with the GPTs. You can also create your own, but if you haven't seen that, um, have a look. Fantastic. Fantastic. And they're getting better. I will say. Let me let me do this for you. Let, let's go back. OK, when I explore the GPTs. How, how many of you have used this? OK, when you explore the Z GPT, say we're going to go to mm, lifestyle. All right. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. We'll go to research. There's some very good ones in research The. Mm, <laughs> See, I want to do travel. They want to plan a trip. See if they come up with travel guide pops right up. Now you see the little balloons with the comments 10K, cheaters, 10K plus, 1K, 1K, and they go less and less and less. In my experience, and this is changing really fast, the ones at the top are the best. Now, if you don't like the results you get from the top, go to the next one, but quickly it drops off. And these are the number of comments that people provide. So, on huge on social proof. The more comments, the more eyeballs are looking, the more people that are using this tool, that's a good sign. 10K is a lot. 10K is a lot. I wouldn't really necessarily bother with the with the ones down below. They're probably inferior and they're not going to give you good results. So just a kind of a guideline for me, okay? So um, I've never clicked on the travel guide. Mm, it's probably going to help us plan a trip. And it'll give us some prompts. So every time you open a, a store, and this one's weird, it just has a T. That's unusual. Plan my dream trip. Okay. Plan my honeymoon to Cancun, Italy. Oh, I like Italy. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I have one. is in August. So you're planning a trip, planning an event. You want to give as much detail as possible. You can, um, while it's generating, and, and you can read that, I'll tell you, you can go into Copilot, you can go into, Power, or go into PowerPoint, add Juco, or if you have an enterprise license. In Copilot, you can say, create a presentation for me. You can do this right now. Create a presentation for me um, for tourists visiting Chicago. They will be here one day. They like wine. They're vegetarian. Um, they don't have any kids. Create an itinerary, put it in a PowerPoint, include live links and contact information for the restaurants. They're going to have lunch and dinner for the restaurants and the locations they're going. Boom. And then you can send it to your friends who are coming in from out of town. Yes. Question from the chat. Do you have to have the paid version? Um, Copilot? Yeah. In order to, to do what I just said? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. And then there's one more I had the now I have the paid version of Chat GPT when you chat GPT four, that's the model. And so is anybody on the GPT store that um you're on Cobalt. That's okay. You can do it in Cobalt. Yes. So chat GPT. Yeah. It is. It is. It's the, it's the engine behind Copilot. ChatGPT4 is engine behind Copilot. What I'm in, what I'm in is, is OpenAI's ChatGPT4, which you do need a paid for license. But if you have Copilot, use Copilot. Okay, and so look at it, it. It gives me a nice breakdown. Day one, Venice, blah, blah, blah. Day, days three and four, Florence, Rome. And it tells you, and you can just say build out for, from here. Just, just build it out and build it out. Okay. Um, okay, how about this? Now, remember, it's using the information from above. This is a continual conversation. It's like I'm talking to a friend. It's like, hey, I'm gonna, I heard you went to Italy last year. You want to go to Italy? Oh, all right. Yeah, how much are your tickets? Like, what's, you know, back and forth. Yeah, the same way, very conversational. So, you heard of NLP, natural language processing. You're talking to it like you're talking to a human. So I live in Chicago. Um, I don't know. I've never used this GPT, so we'll see if it's 
if it can handle this for me. I live in Chicago and we'll fly out of O'Hare. Estimate how much <laughs> this trip will cost me and my husband. I don't know if it can do that. It should. Yeah, crafting a budget. Now, I don't know what it's going to I can, when it's done, I can say, put it in a table, put it in a table format. Um, but let's let it roll and see what it does is breaks down everything. So I can tell my parents how much I need for my honeymoon. <laughs> or I know I have a year to save up for this trip is looking like it's going to be pretty expensive. Um, okay, rewrite rewrite the budget above in a table that I can import into Excel. You don't even have to add that, but I'm, but you get the idea. We can, we can, let me, pretty, pretty nice, right? Um, and, you know, we can say, well, you know, we're not going to fly. We're going to take a, a ship or something crazy like that. Or we want to, you know, do biking. And it's going to, It's right now, I said, make this budget into a table that I can import into Excel. And it's doing it for me. I'm going to go back to my presentation really quick because we're not even through the fun stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to, I have the comparisons. Take a look. Um, again, I think the cost is the big thing right prompting uh, we talked about that i'm just gonna skip i have a takeaway as a pdf if you're interested in it give it to me or give me your um, email me about it um it's about some unique verbs that you can use for better prompting okay and let me make that real big and you can just see it real quick but paraphrase ha huh? this is good for students when they are trying to avoid plagiarism paraphrase Paraphrase, and they can paraphrase 20 times. And by the time they get to the 20th time, your your AI, your plagiarism checker will not catch it because it's been iterated on so many times. So they can keep rolling the dice, if you will. If you're a gamer, you know, just keep rolling the dice um, and get new rolls. But these are, you know, elaborate, streamline, da da da. Very nice. Just don't be be creative. Be creative, and you're gonna get really get the results that you want. Okay, GPT. We just talked about that, more demos. So the staff demo that I was asked about was, okay, so staff plans events, how can I use AI to help my planning? Really quick, I'm gonna jump back to see what they did. Oh, see, now this one's not good. All right, it did not create the table. Do you see that? It tells me how to create the table. I don't wanna do that, I don't have, I don't have time for that. So what I can do is I can take this, and I can put it in Copilot. And hopefully Copilot can help me. New topic. Very important. Here I'm talking about, you know, my classroom and, and William Shakespeare. I don't want to combine the two, my budget, my trip for my honeymoon budget with this. So new topic. All right. And I'm going to paste this in and say, using this budget. Put into table format. All right. Now we'll let that go to work. We'll go back to the deck. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use GPTs. We're gonna do a mock Educon event. We're gonna plan the event, plan the agenda, draft an email, create a social media post, fly, create a flyer, do, <laughs> do a budget. Okay, you get the idea. This is gonna be a challenge. Okay, here's my prompt. And this is all using the GPT. So I'm using an event planner in the GPT store. You can use Copilot. Try it. You can follow along with me. Um, just make up your own. So this was my prompt. I'm not going to do this for all of them, but I'm going to go to that. Okay, look at this beautiful, see, Microsoft. Chef's kiss. All right, <laughs> this is my lovely 
table for my budget for my uh, trip to Italy. Love it. I'll keep that. I might need it. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go to, yes, ma'am. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that I understand correctly because I haven't used GPT. Today's presenter who was doing the session at 9 a.m., he mentioned that because of the privacy set settings in our browser, mm -hmm. Copilot will not be able to maintain conversational code. You will forget the query that you just asked it. So this means that we will have to copy paste every time, for example, like you just did with the... Um, it does depend on your license now for chat PPT4. I do have a license and it does remember everything. Correct. Yeah. But if we are using our browser mm -hmm. signed in in our work account, mm -hmm. it will not. Is that what written at 9 a.m. told you? Yeah. That's okay, what we have to Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, where we have Quizmaker, we are going to go to Event Planner because now we are acting as a coordinator and we're creating um, an Educon event. So, let's do that. Now, again, all I did was I initially used the Explore GPTs and I put Event Plan. And this one rose to the top. So, this, this should be the best, right? And I'm going to put that prompt in there. Okay, let's see what it does. So kind of cute. Again, I'm not using like real, I'm not using Julia Junior College, nothing to train the model on. This is all like hypothetical, fun stuff for illustrative purposes, but it's going through and it's generating. So in my deck, I <laughs> just like the cooking show, I have the finished product. The oven's cold and here it is finished. Okay. Um, you get, you get the idea. It's pretty lengthy. It's pretty detailed. And you can build out and you can you know switch around. It gives you a nice guideline. Now, for the people who have put this lovely Educon together today, you can take your existing one that you've used or say you're doing it for next year and say, this was my agenda. Build something similar. Change up the topics or whatever. And it will build on what you already had, which is even better because it's just throwing stuff out here with the limited information that I gave it. Um, if we go back to the browser, you can see it's still going. So it takes a while and we're not gonna put up with that. Okay, create the agenda. So after that got done, I am in the same conversation. I'm in the same conversation and I will say, once it gets done building, create an agenda for the event using this prompt, create a comprehensive and detailed agenda for the day of the conference. I don't need to give it more details. It's using what, you know, in that current conversation. Include guest speakers, lunch breaks, and be very detailed. Okay. And then what did it come up with? And I'll, I'm going to make this big so you all can see. I did give it the dates and so on. It created a theme for me. Nice. Okay. And it, it created all, whoops, it created all this stuff. I did, excuse me, I did tell it I want a three tracks, one for staff, one for faculty, and one for athletics. I mean, just made it up. But you kind of get the idea, right? Nice. Okay. I have a lot of examples because I want to show you that it's, there's more to it. Okay. And then the budget. I'm not going to do that because I already showed you how to do the budget, but um, I did it in event planner. This was a very, this was a good one. So where the travel, the travel guide didn't quite create the budget table for me. That was a mess. I'm kind of surprised that it didn't. Event planner, event planner did. So if we go back to, oops, sorry, my output. I think I did output. Yeah, this is a table that created for my budget. Now, if you look, some of these might not be appropriate venue okay well we don't need to book a venue we're going to use this lovely space right here is perfect so we can remove that one and and so on right um the equipment we don't we don't need because we have the equipment so you kind of get the idea but it's a really nice starting point now here's what's even better for those of you who organize educon or any other conference and you've done it previous years use the budget you used previously and say 
this was my budget for last year. I'm creating this event. I need a 10% uptick because we want to add swag or we need a, the guest speaker is going to cost more or whatever. And, you know, or just like cost of fuel is up and our guest speaker, you know, whatever it is. And it'll build on your last one. So it'll have all the elements of your budget that you already have. That's the best. That's where you're going to get the best results. But again, just for illustrative purposes, it did a pretty nice job. It was a pretty expensive conference. Okay. <laughs> Twenty thousand dollars. All right. Let's see. Mm, I said I would be jumping, but it just takes so much time to generate, and I want to get to more things. Okay. So now I have my budget. I need to get approval of the department head, right, for the budget. So create an email uh, to the department head, Dr. Sally Smith, asking for approval for the budget. The tone should be courteous and professional. Mention that the budget must be approved by the state. Okay. So it came back. And it came back with a very, like an eight paragraph thing. I said, you know, that email is too verbose. Dr. Smith doesn't like long emails. Make it concise, include bullet points for the key items and remember to retain the flattery. Oh, cause I did add that the, she responds to all the flattery. Okay, so here. I'm sorry. I said in the chat, people are asking for the presentation to be shared for the various. 100%, 100%. This is not my normal presentation style, folks. I'm I'm all about pictures and visuals and I talk, but I designed this to be a lead behind. I didn't know how far we get through. And you have access to everything. I have great resources at the at the back of it. Uh, definitely we'll share it out. And if, if somebody at JJC can distribute it to all the attendees, yeah. I, okay, yes, 100%. A hundred percent. And and again, you see the outputs and you can use, so this was, um, and I even cited like which tools I use. It's going to be different every time. So this was event planner. You can do all of this in Copilot. And, you know, you'll see how the re results change. But, and even, you know, very nice. Always can create a nice subject line for me, da, da, da. So, and you see with the flattery. Okay. I hope this note finds you at the peak of your always impressive and endeavors your leadership not only inspires but okay so you know butter her up and then get her to approve our budget <laughs> okay now we're going to create a linkedin post may not be you know appropriate for this as an internal event but say we created an event we want a linkedin post for it here's my prompt and um event planner can do this so i won't i'm not gonna you know copy paste this prompt you can do it on your own but we'll, let's go to event planner and say um actually i will let's see we're going to create a LinkedIn post. Now we could keep it really simple. We just hit create a LinkedIn post and see what it does. Now look how simple that is. I didn't need that big long prompt, but we'll see what it, we'll see what it does. Because in my prompt, I have told it. So I just said create a LinkedIn post for the event. Super simple, but create an energetic and compelling LinkedIn vote post and I reiterated um, there will be three tracks I mentioned that the deadline for registration so that's for the attendees and then use fun emo emojis for bullet points and don't make the post too long and include hashtags okay but you notice I didn't have to tell it that because it it created the emojis without me having to tell it it depends on the GPT you're using and how how thorough it is and it created hashtags now we might have a custom hashtag like go wolves or something like that. We might want to add to it, you know, modify your own. This is pretty kind of long for a LinkedIn post, in my opinion, you know, make it shorter or um, let's say make it shorter. Let's see what it does. OK, um, but you get the idea. You can if you go to. Um, design.microsoft.com or create.microsoft.com you can create social media posts instagram little reels i'm going to show you i am going to show you how to do some of that stuff but there it's just now making it more brief but including the key information and we're scanning for this and what's the most important thing it says registration details coming soon no we want we want people to know when the deadline is so i would iterate and say please add the add back in the deadline date to register that's important. That's really important. But you know, you fiddle with it, or you just type. You know, instead of coming soon, you take this post and you and you add November the date, and then post it to LinkedIn as is. 
copy and paste. Um, Already, the next one, yeah. Okay, now we'll get, we're gonna create a poster or a flyer for the event. Mm. Okay, and this is the first time I've done this using this tool. Uh, this is Adobe Express. There is a free component and a paid for component. There's lots of tools. Canva is a good one too. I have a license for it. Um, there's a free component want a pay for component. But here's what I did. I, I went to this link. You can do it. We're not going to take the time so I can get through more material for you today. But I took this prompt, copied and pasted it into the Adobe link above right there. And here's what I got. I did it two times. They created four designs each time. Pretty cool, huh? Then you can edit it. Now, to edit it, you may have to pay for the license. I'm not sure. Canva, Canva, you can you can edit and play around. Um, but these are pretty cool. I mean, maybe they're not perfect, but it's easy to swap out a picture. Uh, I just grab, you know, these are screenshots the way I have them here. But you kind of get the idea. This was generated in no time at all. Um, if you want to see it, maybe let's take a look because we have a little time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's do da, 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 da. see them. You know, oh, they have social media. They have flyers. So I want to make a flyer. There. I want to make a flyer. Oh. You know, I don't know if I text a template. Let's see. Oh, well, it says. Poster for a chess tournament. Let's just do that. And we don't have to worry. Um, or party invitation for kids' birthday. Let's just see what it does. But I didn't give it any details. There, like right there, it did. Now, th this is generative, right? So let's see. Um, mm Don't know how this works with text. A lot of uh, generative AI tools are not real good with text. Now, if Adobe is generating flyers, I would assume they are good. But we'll see. It's the first time I've, I've done this. OK, we're going to move forward as that is building. Um, but quite nice. I just, you know, it did put Educon 2024. It spelled it properly. I did try some other tools first that did not get spelling and things right. And it was not a good demo to show. Okay. Now we're going to have some fun in the last few minutes. Okay. We're going to recap a long YouTube video. This is going to take a little bit. We can kick this off and do other things, but. Um, there is a GPT called Video Summarizer, right? It's in the GPT store. Uh, I have a live link here. We're going to go to it. Let's see what Adobe is doing. Oh, OK. So my prompt was cross-country event. It's creating a flyer. Cross-country event at July Junior College, November 1st. Da, da, da. Look at that. Now, I can replace or I can add the Wolves logo anywhere here. I can add a, an actual picture of our athletes. So I don't want to do that. You know, but here's a framework. I should have told it, make the colors purple, right? Purple and white or, you know, school colors. But you get the idea. That was pretty nice. Okay, done with that. Video summarizer. All right, give me any YouTube URL to summarize. So I already picked one. And the one I picked was um, in this Amazon video. I'm going to copy the link. This video is 56 minutes long. So it's a pretty long video. I'm too lazy to watch it all. All right, just give me the highlights. That in. This is totally free. Well, I'm, I do have the GPT-4 license. I shouldn't say that. But I think OpenAI's GPT-4 license is great. Um, if you have Copilot, you know, it's GPT-4 under the hood. It's GPT-3.5 if you're free. And so this is going to take a while. Oh, always. I. Oh, and I always allow, just allow for this purpose. Okay, we're going to move on. So it's going to take a minute, but it's going to generate. And the video, it's um, it's called Uncharted, the Beautiful World of the Amazon, Free Documentary Nature. I think it's National Geographic, the video, an hour long. 
So let's, let's let that kind of marinate and do its thing. This was the output that it generated, should generate very similar output. What's nice too, is it does the time stamping. I love that because, ooh, all right, talk about diversity. Okay, that's cool. Oh, God. Um, I'm going to make this bigger for the crowd. But, oh, um, where it talked about, ooh, the Amazon rainforest. I want to and go to that. So I can go to the video and I can go right to that segment and I can watch that portion of the video that I want to get those. Okay. You can also grab a transcript. If I'm okay. You can also grab, grab a transcript and summarize it in that way. You can create a quiz from it. Right, there's a two hour documentary on Napoleon and you for your history class, you wanna create a quiz, you can use the same thing and you can create a quiz from the transcript on the YouTube. So really, you know, powerful, powerful tools. Okay, this is a fun one, this is just for fun. Okay, so I have my refrigerator, I'm gonna, you know, what do I do with the food in my fridge? I'm not gonna go shopping. I'm, I don't have time, I'm in my pajamas. What can I make with the stuff that's in my fridge? You've probably heard of this before, right? So I went to just a stock photo of a refrigerator. Um, here's what it looks like. That's what it looks like, okay? You can see the oikos, the cottage cheese, the hummus, some of the fruit, the eggs, all right? And um, I said, provide me with two recipes that I can make from the ingredients in the photo here and then um, see what it comes up with. So let's do that. Uh, and you, we'll use Copilot. And you please follow along if you can, if you're encouraged by this. Let's see. I want a new topic because I don't want to. I don't want to merge my refrigerator with my um, trip to Italy or whatever I was doing. Okay. So mm -hmm. let me grab my prompt. So. I could do one recipe. I just did two because I want a couple different choices. And um, okay, all right. I'm gonna skip that right now. Let's see what else I got. But this is what it came up with. It came up with a, a hummus veggie wrap and a cottage cheese breakfast bowl. And if you don't like those, you can reroll. Um, okay, here's another one. I'm just gonna talk about it. You want a new playlist, okay? You can go to, there's a playlist AI, and you can say, I need I need a new playlist for my workouts. Keep it to 20 tracks or whatever, and it will, put, it will populate it. And then it will say, do you want to put this into your iTunes or Spotify? That's where I stopped. Again, privacy, data information, but you know, you can, you do you. What you can do though, is you can grab those tracks and you can manually add them to Spotify if you don't wanna share your, your data, you know, your Spotify account with this GPT tool. I didn't wanna do that, all right? Um, but here's what it created, pretty cool. And, see, and it, it says, you can, this can be created on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, or Deezer. And if you have one of those, you can, it'll just suck it right in, great. Um, I have so much time, okay. I said, I use Spotify. And that's where I stopped it so you can sign in and then it'll link you. I did not do that. Um, make a video for a sh from, make a short reel. So create a short video reel from text. I said, create a YouTube short about how AI can help in the world of accessibility. Make the video authoritative, professional, and use an American female voice. You could use a male British voice, whatever you want. This is what I did. I have a, I think I have a link to it, so we have to wait for it to generate. It takes a long time to generate. It's totally free. And this is my video. That's not my video. It, it I mean, it's, it was so impressive. And I know we don't have time. Walk through this when you get the deck because it's so powerful. And it, it created like a one and a half minute YouTube short. And it was flawless. Very cool. You can create stickers, a sticker generator. I was kind of playing around with that. It's not exactly the mascot, but you get the idea. Create a training program. And we talked about that. Negotiate buying a car. You can negotiate um, more pay, right? This is the negotiator GPT. Brilliant. Yeah, we all like it. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I noticed that on your home. I was going to say if you did my 
pulling that up. Many are many in the chat are asking about that QR code. Thank you, so thank you. I am. So it's a lot to squeeze into an hour, folks, but hopefully something that kind of sparked sparked your interest, and you'll just take it and run with it. Thank you. Thank you. And if you, I can give you my email. Uh, or yes, I want to. You have my email. Just, and you can send oh, the deck, and I'll make sure. For sure. Good. I have a deck, and I have a a PDF takeaway. If you, if you can send both, I will. That would be great. Okay. And, and everyone's uh, in here signed in. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks.